But Charlie is a blessing, amen, and I am so thankful for what the Lord is doing through him. I'm thankful for faithful servants. I'm thankful that he's come to Ardmore, Oklahoma, and let's just welcome him as he comes to minister, amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. How many of you are excited tonight? God did some awesome things last night, and I just believe that God is going to continue to do some powerful things even tonight. I feel the presence of God uh, strong in this place. And um, I felt like last night we were just uh, chiseling away at some things in the spirit. How many felt like some things were just being chiseled away and and uh, there was a real um, strong presence of the Holy Spirit last night and um, I believe the Lord wants to increase that tonight amen now if you brought any uh, cloths or anything why don't you go ahead and just throw those up here uh, if you have some other items besides cloths bring them up here uh, like if you're going to take your shoes off or something, don't throw them at me. Yeah, just put them right there. And if you want, you can take those out of that bag. That way I can walk on them. And um, thank you, Lord. Wow, there's a, a unicorn. Thank you, Lord. I like that. Hallelujah. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Is this all? Is this all? Everything. Sometimes people have some interesting um, items that they bring up, and I always take a double take at them. And um, other times, we have some incredible miracles that happen through um, uh, items like watches and. Um, <laughs> And uh, jewelry, especially jewelry, it, it's a real interesting thing. I was um, ministering in South Africa, and this uh, man came in, and he brought a um, a gold cross necklace, and he put it on the platform on the on my po on the podium, and I just picked it up, and and um, I was jokingly saying that I was going to just keep it, and um, the power of God was just. I felt the spirit of God so strong, and I asked the Lord to give a, a miracle for whoever needed it for that particular um, item. And I just held on to it and preached for a little while, and I put it back on the podium, and the man ran up and, and grabbed it and just left out of the building. I said, well, that was rude. He didn't even stay until the end. Um, but the man, actually, his wife was in critical condition in the hospital. And so he ran to the hospital. His wife was in kidney failure, and she was she was dying. And she, he put the necklace on uh, her body, and the bo her body started to react to um, the anointing in, a, in in an interesting way. It actually started to burn her physically, and the doctors thought that she was having an allergic reaction to the necklace. She said, "I." They said, you need to take this off. You're having an allergic reaction. She said, no, that's just the Holy Ghost working. How many have ever met saints like that that are like, no, that's just the Holy Ghost moving. You don't, you don't know nothing about that yet. And the, and the doctor was like, no, uh, you're crazy, and this necklace is giving you a, a, a chemical and allergic reaction, and we need you to take it off. She said, I refuse to take it off. Jesus is giving me healing right now, and my, my kidneys are being healed. And he said, no, ma'am, your kidneys are in failure, and you're dying, and you're delusional right now. And she said, no, uh, you just don't know my Jesus. And so um, she <laughs> jumped out of, the, uh, out of the hospital bed and did one of those Pentecostal shuffles. I don't know, I don't know if y'all do those around here. I can teach you later, you know, when we start getting going here and start shouting. Um, hallelujah. I, 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 I used to run around the church. I don't know if we have any runners in here. Some people will become so, you know, tame that they, they, they'll, they'll run in, in their seat, you know, but they won't run around the building, you know. 
I used to run around. And uh, anyways, Pentecostal shuffles. You know, charismatics know a lot about, you know, flag waving. They'll wave their flags. They have like their certain way, like this means they're driving down demons. If they go like this, it means open heaven. I don't know about all that, I, you know, but I do know, you know, when the Holy Ghost hits, I might just start running. I'll lose my shoes. I, I you know, I'll do a, I'll do a ho- holy roll. You like what, what? What is a holy, holy rollers? Well, I'll show you one later tonight if it, if the, if the presence breaks out. One time, I was, I'll get back to the story that I was talking about, but let me take a real quick bunny trail on that note. Um, uh, when I was in Bible school, I went to this particular school in Columbus, Ohio, that is um, primarily uh, per, um, Pentecostal in nature, but they had never seen anything like me before. And so the preacher, who's a well-known television preacher, if I said his name, you'd know who he is, um, he said, do something that you've never done before. Well, you don't tell an 18-year-old kid that was on drugs and is now full of the Holy Ghost to do something that they've never done before. And so I just started doing a somersault right down the middle aisle of the church. And I, I, I really felt the Holy Ghost was moving very strongly because I felt myself being lifted off the ground. I realized it was two ushers carrying me out the door. And, I, and he said, they said, what are you do, uh, doing? I, I said, no, what are you doing? Did you not hear the man of God? He said, do something that we've never done before. I had never done a somersault before, but I think I'll do it again. Just touch your neighbor and say, you're going to do something that you've never done before. Hallelujah. <laughs> so the lady jumped out of the out of the um, uh, the bed, and she just did a Holy Ghost shuffle, and um, God touched her and just so powerfully, and she wanted to leave that moment, and the doctor said, "Well, you can't leave right now." She said, "Well, why not? I'm healed." And, they, and she said, well, "He said, well, you got all these things that are connected to your body, and 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 you know, you just can't leave. You're in kidney failure." She said, well, run the tests again. And so, well, you're going to have to, he said, well, you have to give us 24 hours. She said, well, run the test right now. So they ran the test again. She had to stay, and uh, God gave her two brand new kidneys. <laughs> Hallelujah. So powerful. Uh, how many love that kind of stuff? Say, so what is he doing? I'm, you know, I just thought of it right now. I think I have a picture of the lady here on my iPad. How many of you love super uh, technology? Sometimes. Yeah, she was young too. Here she is right here. And uh, that's the pastor there in Durban, South Africa. That's the necklace that she's wearing. And God healed her completely. And the last time I was there, uh, they had just had a baby. Hallelujah. So we, so I'm telling you, whatever you came for tonight, if it, you came, uh, well, somebody teared up a whole entire bed sheet. I guess they're going to, they're going to anoint every, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to distribute these throughout the entire city of Ardmore. <laughs> Hallelujah. I like that. Hallelujah. One time a lady came to me. She brought a bed sheet. I said, what, what's this for? She said, my husband. I said, well, well why do you want the bed sheet? And uh, she said, well, because he's full of the devil. <laughs> so I want him to get delivered. The best place I could think of was, uh, you know, the sheets. Oh, hallelujah. That's a cool ring. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> wow. Whose is this? Okay. All right. Lord Jesus. Whew. The fire hit this. You know, we had to go back tonight to get my get my my rings. I left them on the, the counter. I said, Pastor Andy, we got to turn the car around right now. I don't preach without my wedding ring on. So we had to turn around. I brought up a story of uh, several years ago, I was in um, the nation of France and I was ministering. 
and I had I woke up in the morning and they had to take me to the airport early and um, I had left my wedding ring on the uh, the side drawer of the of the hotel that I was staying in and um, it was too late we couldn't turn around it was like we were down and going and we had to get to the airport otherwise I was going to miss my flight and I, f I was like, wow, Lord Jesus. I was like, I can't believe I left my wedding ring in the hotel room. And um, got back home. We got back to the United States. I started going through my bag. I thought maybe I might have put it somewhere in my bag. And, you know, I told Brent, I'm so sorry, honey. I left my wedding ring in the hotel on the side counter. And um, I said, but maybe the Lord will bring it back. I had heard a story about a Bobby Connor who had lost a, a pocket knife and it materialized in his room. And so I said, Lord, um, if you can do that for Bobby, for his pocket knife, you can do it for Charlie in his wedding ring. And so we start, I started praying and I had another trip that weekend uh, out into um, the state of California. I was going to... Um, place called MacArthur, California, which is right outside of Reading, and I was unpacking my bag that night. I got in around one o'clock in the morning, and I was unpacking my bag, and I was thinking about that ring. And I was thinking about, I said, that ain't right. I said, that thing needs to come back in the name of Jesus, and suddenly um, I heard this like a sound on my bed and 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 something like drop like a stone on my bed turned around it was my wedding ring I was so shocked it's one o'clock in the morning there it's, it was about 3 a.m. Where, where Bryn was at I started texting her pictures of my hand with the ring on and I said honey the ring just materialized in the in, in the room and um, I'm telling you, don't you love the angelic? I feel the angelic, like, real strong presence here tonight. And I'm telling you that even lost things, things, heirlooms that have been left behind or stolen or taken, God can return those things. Um is this okay? I got a word for you tonight, but I just feel, just feel something right now. Um, I I was in I was in um, Australia a few years ago. I was ministering in Melbourne, Australia, and an angel came into the meeting, took a ring in the spirit, and put it in my hand. And I said, I said to the angel, I said, "What is this?" He said, somebody lost it. Give it back to him. I thought, well, what is it? They said, they, uh, they said, it's a ring, but it's an heirloom. It's been in their family for a long time. And um, they, they've, they don't have it, and they need it back. And um, so I got up that night, and I said, an angel just came in with someone's ring. And the Lord wants to give it back to you. It was an heirloom. And so the angel is being released to your house. And you're going to find that ring. And I, and I described the ring. That lady stood up. She said, that was me. That's me. That's my ring. She stood up and she took it. She went back to her house. And she was walking through her, her living room. And all of a sudden, she didn't have any shoes on. She stubbed her toe. She looked down into the, into the carpeting of the, of the room, and there was the ring that she had lost 15 years prior. It, it manifested. It was a pink diamond ring that was her grandmother's. What was so powerful about this, about this miracle is that she had found, it was 15 years, but 10 years prior to that, she had moved into this new house. So she lost the ring in a completely different location and the ring manifested in a carpet that she had for 10 years been vacuuming. 
I'm telling you, we serve a supernatural God that will, that will give back what the enemy has stolen. Is there somebody here tonight and, and you, uh, you lost your wedding ring or this was like a ring that was an heirloom to you and you're believing God for it to come back and it has not materialized? It, 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 why don't you come? I just want to. I just want to pray for you real quick. I know you come. Come on. It can be more than one person, but I just felt that. I. I just felt that in the atmosphere tonight that God wants to restore some things, and I've seen this time and time again where this atmosphere comes into the room, and it's actually an atmosphere of restoration. It's an actual realm of restoring and, and restoration. And I've seen all kinds of things restored, not just, um, you know, rings and, and, and things like that. Um, but just lift up your hands. Holy Spirit. There's a river that's just flowing here tonight. Holy Spirit, just release your power right now of restoration. Lord, we thank you for the angels moving. We acknowledge the, the angelic realm. We thank you for releasing angels on assignment for what has been stolen, broken, taken that it would be restored by the power of the Holy Spirit, that they would find these things that have uh, been, been lost. And Lord, you, you are into recovery. You are into restoration. So Lord, I just pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that you would begin to restore Thank you for that wind just blowing restoration. Some people need other things restored like their mind. God will restore that too. Some people will lose their memory and God will restore that, you know. Jesus. Loose! Right now. Go and get it, angels. Shh. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, God will restore even your mind. He'll bring your mind back. He'll bring your mind back. He'll bring he'll bring people in your family that have lost their mind. And um they'll be restored. I mean really lost their mind. Some people are like, they done lost their mind. No, I mean really. <laughs> like in a straight jacket, y'all, you know. People are like, she done lost her mind. I'm gonna tell her something. No no, I'm I'm um, I'm, uh, I'm talking about people that have literally lost, like, their mind, and God will restore their mind. 
um, I've seen it where you're not allowed to bring, um, you're not allowed to bring, um, you know, certain items to people that are that are in, you know, um, mental institutions. But they'll they'll let you bring like candy or food, and we've prayed for that before, and 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 God has delivered people from that. Is there somebody in here tonight, and and you have a family member? Um, that is in is in like a, um, a spe- like a how uh, uh, they're in a, a mental like ward they've they have in uh, mental issues and things like that. Um, I want you to come right now. I want to I want I want to pray for that right right now. Wow. Did you bring some stuff and put it up here for them, any of you? You did. You forgot to bring something. Okay, well, maybe somebody will give you a, one of these 150 cloths right here that we have. That's going to be distributed out throughout the whole entire state of Oklahoma. <laughs> and Texas. Thank you, Lord. Praise Jesus. Now, just lift up your hands. Um, if I could have an usher help me. Um, what I want, just come a little closer to me. Um, I want to I want to pray for you, um, but we're, you're standing in the gap for them right now. And so um, just when I come and pray for you, just tell me their name because I just want to loose the power of God right now. What, what's their name, ma'am? For Kelly? Kaylin and Kelly, Father, in the name of Jesus, loose right now by the power of God over their mind, command them to be completely healed and brought back in Jesus' name. What's her name? Rachel. Rachel. Fire right now in Jesus' name on Rachel. Let her come back right now, her perfect mind. What's the name? Chad, Selena, Judy. Wow, you got a lot of people. (laughs) Lord, right now. In Jesus' name, loose right now in their mind. Freedom right now. Freedom. Brittany, in the name of Jesus, command you to come back into your mind right now in Jesus' name. Sabrina, Sabrina, come back now. Shh, does this have to do with drugs as well? Medication. Okay. In the name of Jesus, Sabrina, I command you to come into your right mind right now. Thank you, Lord. What's up? What's going on, buddy? Brother Christian. Okay. Yeah. All right, lift up your hands right now. I command Christian to come out in the name of Jesus. Every demonic influence, every every spirit of pharmacai, I break its power. Lord, I thank you for the angel of the Lord's deliverance going to him now. God, I thank you for bringing him into his right mind, setting him free in the name of Jesus. Loose right now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. What 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 is it? My brother. Your brother, what's his name? Danny. Danny. Father in Jesus' name for Danny right now. Freedom, Jesus. Freedom right now. Right now in Jesus' name. No more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What what what's the name? Dennis. Dennis. Dennis? My brother. That's your brother. All right, Dennis in the name of Jesus. And no more fear for you in the name of Jesus right now. Thank you, God. Mm. Thank you, Lord, right now. What is it? Donnie and Jamie. Okay, Jamie in Jesus' name. Let the power of heaven flow on Jamie right now. Loose her now in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, let the power of God flow into her body. Every demonic influence broken in Jesus' name. What's going on? It's you. You need it. Just lift up your hands right now in Jesus' mighty name. What's your name? Heather, in the name of Jesus, 
I bind every addiction. I break every power, every occultic spirit that's been tormenting your mind in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for Heather, that the power of the Holy Spirit is setting her free right now. I command every spirit of pharmacy to be broken, every demonic power that has harassed her to be loosed off of her in Jesus' mighty name, every addiction to be broken by the power of the Lord. I bind that now. I bind that now. I bind it now. In Jesus' name, right now. Jesus, loose right now. Stretch your hands towards her and pray in the Holy Spirit. Fire of God right now. Loose right now in Jesus' name. I bind every addiction. I break every power. Even the spirit of suicide, I bind you now in Jesus' name. I command you to be loosed. Are you know her? That's your sister. Okay. Father, in Jesus' name, you're going to live and not die. I bind the spirit of suicide, tormenting demons coming into your mind. I break them now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command all shame to be right now. I command freedom to come to you by the power of the Holy Ghost. I command organs, put your hands on your stomach right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Let's lift up our hands for a moment. Hallelujah. Yeah, just open up your mouth. Just worship Him. Thank you, Lord. Oh, that's it. Just so there's a river that's flowing here tonight. It's a river that's flowing here tonight. It's a river. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Where do you go to church? Do you, you come here before? You've come here many times. You need to get plugged in here. That's the only way you're going to stay free. You understand me? You need to go out. In Jesus' name. Total freedom in Jesus' name. Total freedom in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Got to stay in church. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Put your hand on somebody that's close to you and just, just <laughs> give, them, give them a drink right now. Hallelujah. Came to Saturday night, night number two. First night, Brother Charlie told us that we need to be in church. Second night, we did deliverance. I just, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh.
<laughs> oh. Oh, my. Tonight's starting out with a bang. Goodness. No telling what's going to happen tomorrow on Sunday. Sunday morning. Glory. You know, we got to let the river of God move. Now people are throwing their rings up here. We got to let the river of God move. And, um, you know, God wants to pour out his spirit. Go ahead, sister. God wants to pour out his spirit um, in, a, in a powerful way. And we got to let him. We got to let him. What, what are you, is that a marker? Cheap lipstick. You want your, sister, you want your lips to be anointed. Just your whole face. You're like, you're going to take, you're like, you're like, I just, I just claim, I just claim Isaiah 6. When I put, I put this lipstick on, it's going to be like the fire or the coal off the altar. You know, call up your friend. You know, Betty, Charlie prayed for my lipstick, and ever since then, I just got a new prophetic anointing. I don't know what it is. Oh, my goodness. I've never prayed for lipstick before, but, Lord, let the fire of God come on it. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Is that your video game thing? Is that your video game thing? Is, is it? This is your pencil case. Oh, nice. You want your art to be anointed or your video game to be anointed? Your art. All right. Amen. He can, he can draw some stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. But we got to let the river, we got to let the river of God begin to flow in a powerful way. You're, oh, you, you, you didn't, it just, it is, it wanted to be up here. It just came off. Wow. Is that your, that's your right ear. Yeah, you know, the, you know um, bond slaves used to be pierced through their ear. Uh, did you know that? Yeah, well, Lord, anoint her ear to hear. Your earring was like, I am getting in on this. <laughs> Don't you stop me either. Oh, my goodness. It was your mom's ear. Oh, my. Mmm. That's something. I'll leave. I'm put this up here. Mm. Thank you, Lord. I uh, I had a a dream um, earlier this year where I was brought into a service where I literally saw the power, the presence of Jesus, just moving in the local church, like like I'd never seen before, and. Um, uh, the Lord started to speak to me about the river of God flowing out of the local church in 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 such a mighty mighty way um, in in this coming year, and there was going to be some challenges. In fact, I had seen a spirit of uh, of Jezebel that was trying to rise up in the church, and see some some people have preached you know uh, Jezebel as a gender. But Jezebel is neither male nor female. Jezebel is a spirit that when you look at 1 Kings, the very first place that she shows up is with Naboth's vineyard. So the spirit of Jezebel comes to control the land and primarily wants to control the garden where the vine and the grapes are being grown. Because its ultimate goal is to stop the flow of the Holy Spirit. It wants to control the move of God in, in, in the land. And so you got to understand 
that there is a challenge when it comes to moving in dynamics of the Spirit of God in this hour. Um, the devil's not happy that you're going after the Holy Spirit and that you're giving the room for God to move in, in, in your services. If you're a pastor, you're a leader, you're a particular target to the enemy because he knows that if he can take you out, then the entire church and the move will, will begin to, to suffer as a result of that. That's why he targets, you know, leaders. And, you know, we need to begin to recognize that when the enemy comes in like a flood, God has called us to raise up a standard and boldness against him. The Bible says that out of our innermost being is going to flow rivers of living water. Just look at your neighbor and say that you got a river on the inside of you. You got to let it flow. The Bible says that it, it, that's John 7, 37 and 38. Jesus stood up on the great day of the feast and he decra- declared, all those that are hungry, all those that are thirsty, come unto me and drink for out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. That's such a powerful passage of scripture because it was on the eighth day of the feast, uh, pri- uh, of the, uh, uh, the feast of tabernacles. And so here's Jesus standing up on that final day, and he's saying, listen, all those that are thirsty, all those that need a drink of refreshing, come to the living water and begin to drink out of it, for out of the innermost being is going to flow those rivers. What you have to understand is that feast was for eight solid days. And on the very first day, uh, the priest stood up and actually quoted from Zechariah 14, verse 8, where it says, on that day, the living water will flow from Jerusalem. And so the, the whole feast was based around the fact that Moses in the wilderness had struck the rock and water had poured out. That was the feast, part of it. That the fact that there was... Uh, out of the living rock, there would be a flow of this water that was alive. And, and so on that last day, the priests would stand up, and because they knew that uh, without the Messiah, there could be no fulfillment of this particular passage of Scripture, they would cry out for the rain to come from, from, from heaven because through priestly sacrifice in the law living water could be could rep uh, water from the sky like rain would represent living water and in actuality there's no way that that's possible because the only living water was jesus christ and so when he stood up on that day he was the fulfillment of not the day that moses struck the rock but he was the fulfillment of when God told Moses to speak to the rock and the water will flow in other words let me say this to you friends there's something that's in the inside of your mouth that when we begin to speak it out the water of the spirit begins to flow and God wants us to begin to allow the spirit to flow out of us in a powerful way and we need to begin to allow the spirit of God to flow out of us in such a powerful dynamic that when we come into the meetings everyone will begin to flow in the same river and the flow of the spirit will touch not just one or two people but it begins to flow and touch the entire body I want you to turn with me to uh, um, Ephesians chapter 5. There's an effortlessness in the Spirit. That when the Spirit flows, it is the power to break off yoke of bondage, to set us free. The presence of Jesus flows, and there's miracles. It's not, it's not where we strike the rock to get something to happen, but it's when we speak 
and we begin to decree and declare that that river that is living on the inside of us begins to flow so that others can receive a, a, a drink. The person on the right and the left of you tonight can receive a refreshing simply by sitting next to you. So many believers come to meetings to receive something when they should actually come to release something. They should be carrying something into the meeting that gives life. And, I, you know, there, there's, there's always those that come that need but there are those mature believers that can come into a place and because they're there, they are able to create a, the atmosphere so that the river can begin to flow and touch those that are around. I'm telling you, you're carrying something on the inside of you. And in the book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 5 and verse 18, the Bible says, Paul is speaking to the church of Ephesus and he says, do not be drunk with wine which is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting one to another in the fear of the Lord. And this particular passage where Paul says be filled with the Spirit is a present tense verb which implies the need to be regularly filled with the Spirit. It also, in the Greek, there is an understanding here that it is not a suggestion. Paul is not saying, uh, dear brothers and sisters in Ephesus, I would suggest to you that you would be filled with the Spirit do not be drunk with wine, but be filled. Go in peace. No, Paul was not saying it is a suggestion. He was making a decree and a command for all believers to be filled with the Spirit. Because everything flows out of the Spirit. Nothing can be done separate from the Spirit. Anything that is void of the Spirit of God that is supernatural is divination. You can't force even the gifts. Is this okay? You can't force a particular gift to flow at any time that you desire. The Bible says that it is according to the will of God that those gifts flow. Hmm. Go on and teach tonight, Brother Charlie. You're doing very well. If the spirit of prophecy is not flowing and yet somebody begins to step out and you begin to see spiritual dynamics, but yet your spirit is not right, it doesn't feel right, and you've been in the spirit praying in the Holy Ghost, and you know the Spirit of God, but yet there's something about, you, about what's happening that turns your spirit and says there's not right. You should actually listen to that more than even the prophetic word that's being given. Because the Spirit of God will lead and guide us into all truth. And there can be, even within certain places, because people are hungry for the supernatural, there can be at some time and, and, and sometimes where people uh, are moving outside of the Spirit of God and now they're flowing in a familiar spirit. And because we live in an hour right now where discernment is very low and the Spirit of the Lord is not being readily received into the church and taught People are easily deceived and they can get into deception because they see a spiritual dynamic and they feel a force, but they're not able to discern between if it is of God or if it's not. There needs to be a sensitivity that we, we begin to walk in as believers where we are mature and we can recognize the difference between error and a familiar spirit and the spirit of God. Just because somebody can tell you your first and last name and your address doesn't mean that they're sent from the Spirit of the Lord. 
man, I'm preaching good tonight, and you're quiet. Just because somebody can give you information doesn't mean necessarily that's revelation. And discernment needs to be activated. And I'm not just I'm not talking about, you know, discernment and like, you know, you know, sister, I just don't feel like his something ain't right with him. I I just I just be discerning something. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the discerning of spirits because the discerning of spirits is the discernment of both evil, angelic. the spirit of God and the human spirit because you can discern behind people's motives and it's greatly needed in this hour because supernatural speech comes out of the Holy Spirit and when that pure river is flowing the power of God can transform any situation we don't want just information We don't want just somebody to be able to tell us information about ourselves. We want that information to flow into the gift of prophecy where we can come back in a year, six months, eight months and say, you know what, you, you, you released that prophetic word, the river of God was flowing, I was refreshed, and the thing that you prophesied came to pass. And... This is why Paul, to the, uh, to the church of Ephesus, began to talk to them about being constantly filled with the Spirit. Because when you know the city of Ephesus, and you, realize, you un- understand the occultic system that was in that particular city, you would recognize that there was a desperate need for the believers there to be constantly filled and refreshed in the Holy Ghost so that they could discern that which is light and that which is darkness. But also so that when they came together, they would be able to release spiritual songs and God would begin to release revelation that would edify, exhort, and comfort the believers and they would begin to be built up into this perfect house so that they could affect the very city that they were living in. Let me tell you something. Whenever there is a church that is planted by the Holy Spirit, that is a kingdom spirit embassy that has been placed in that land to affect that region for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God calls believers by faith into that place to begin to be filled with the Holy Ghost. To be trained and equipped so that they can go out into their everyday life and begin to release the kingdom of God. If you're on E, my friend, you can affect the city in which you live in. The culture and the atmosphere in which you are, you're living in can affect you. But when you begin to be filled with the Spirit, say filled with the Spirit. When you're filled with the Spirit you begin to be a drink that's poured out. Things will just start flowing out of you. Spiritual tongues will begin to flow out of you. Did you know that there's four spiritual tongues? There's actually four that I've seen in the Bible and that I've seen, you know, throughout my ministry. The first one is actually a spiritual tongue, but it's in a natural language. That's prophecy. Prophecy is not coming out of your head. It's coming out of your spirit. And it feels as though it's a bubbling river that's coming out of you and that the words are not being, they're not coming out of your mind or articulated or, or, or something that you thought up in your in your in your your psyche 
they're flowing freely out of your innermost being that's why the why peter told uh the believers to be vessels of honor oracles of the lord when you're an oracle you're a vessel the 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 purified water springs up it's the it's literally the well of life that springs up out of you and begins to flow and release that life or that sozo of salvation to others and these words are not coming out of your mind they're coming right out of your innermost being that's why i i I mean i I believe that you can you can in some ways train and learn about the gift of prophecy but and and of course the 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 prophecy the 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 prophet is subject to 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 the prophetic we understand all that but you have to recognize that you can't just suddenly turn it on this is just my my thought you may disagree with me but tonight i'm talking i'm kidding and um i've been in situations before where i've been brought into meetings with other nations, multi-millionaires sitting at the table with their phones, and they say, you're going to prophesy over this person. And I say, no, I'm not going to prophesy over that person. And they say, yes, you are. And I say, no, I'm not. And then they'll say to me, well, this man has a, has the finances to change your entire ministry. I said, no, the only person that has the ability to change the finances of my ministry is Jesus. And they say, well, you'll never be invited back to this country if you don't do that. I say, well, don't ever invite me back again. Because when you understand that if you begin to move outside the parameters of the Holy Spirit and you begin, to, you begin to prophesy not according to God's will but according to man's psyche and what they want to hear to you, you have just stepped outside the boundaries of the Holy Ghost and into the enemy's territory where you can literally be destroyed. And see, God is looking for vessels of honor that will say, I refuse to corrupt the gift of God on my life, and I'm not going to allow the utterance of the Lord to flow in any taintedness, but I'm going to flow in the pure stream of God. I'm going to keep the river pure. I'm not going to allow any serpents into my into my fountain, into my well, or into my river that will allow deception to come in, and I'm not going to use deception in order to get what I want. No, I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide me into all truth, and He is going to take me from one glory into the next glory. Hallelujah. And so we got we to gotta allow the Spirit of God to bubble up upon us. And I always say, well, if I have a word for you, then I'll give it to you. But if I have nothing, then, you know, I can't give you nothing. Because it's not Brother Charlie that's giving things. It's the Spirit of God that's giving to the church. And if we begin to believe that somehow we own something, then we can begin to, we'll begin to manipulate it. But God is looking for people that will say, God, whatever you want, the flow of the Spirit that you want, the glory that you desire, whew, we long for that. And sometimes you'll speak, you'll be speaking in, in, in spiritual tongues, in other languages, and you won't even know the languages that you're speaking. The book of Acts, chapter 2, it says that they heard them speak in their languages and glorifying God. I remember I was doing a crusade with my father. We went to the nation of the Philippines, and we were down in Mindanao, in a, a, a place that was at that time very overran by terrorists and, and, and Muslim um, extremism. And we were down there doing a crusade, and the power of God hit this place. I mean, like a whirlwind. Went through this open-air field, this this open-air meeting. And uh, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, he said, son, he said, do you want to see a new dimension of the presence of God begin to move? I said, well, yes, Lord. He said, sing. Sing in the spirit. 
And suddenly a song started bubbling in my spirit, man. I said, Lord, I don't sing. The Lord said, you sing now. I said, no. He said, do you want to see a fresh dimension of the spirit move? I said, I said, yes, Lord. He said, step out in faith and release that prophetic song. And so I, hesitant, I, I was hesitant, but I stepped out and started to sing and and I started to sing this song, and all of a sudden, in, 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 in the realm of the Spirit, I saw seraphim angels like balls of fire, whirling wind, like it was like a whirling ball of fire coming into the meeting in the, in, on the crusade grounds and hitting people, just boom. And they were falling, just hitting, people were being delivered. And, and I'm standing on the platform with my interpreter, and I'm hearing all these people, and they're screaming, and they're talking in English, and they're saying they're glorifying God. They were speaking, you know, wonderful praises of God. Some of them were screaming that, I'm on fire. God's, God, the fire of God is on me. The fire of God is on me. And my interpreter looks over at me and says, this is a miracle from God. I said, wow, this is a very powerful move of the Spirit. And people are rolling around on the floor and, 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 and screaming. And, 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 and she goes, no, you don't understand. This is a very powerful move of the Holy Ghost. I said, no, I do understand. It's very powerful what's happening here. She said, no. Do you hear that? I said, yeah, they're glorifying God. I said, I said they're glorifying God, of course. She said, you don't understand. None of these people speak English. They were literally speaking in tongues, but it was English. <laughs> they were glorifying God in an unknown tongue, yet it was in the English language. Glory. God will do it. He'll let it flow right out of you. When the fire of God touches you, the power of the Holy Ghost comes on you, and you start singing, and you start praising, and you start releasing that song and those hymns and those spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to God. It will begin to flow right out of you like water, and you won't even know exactly what you're saying, but it's something so powerful that can literally change the atmosphere of that entire area. I was in South Africa ministering and I was standing behind the pulpit and suddenly I went into an, an, uh, an open vision where, an, where a lion literally walked down the side of the church in the spirit. And I started talking to the lion. I thought I was talking English. And the lion is sitting, I'm having a conversation with the lion and the power and, 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 and I'm in this encounter and I'm asking the lion about some things and I come out of the encounter and this lady on the third row screams at me. She said, you were just talking in my native tongue. And I said, what, English? She said, no, Zulu. While I was in the trance, I was speaking Zulu. And I said, what did I, I said, what did I say? She said, well, you said that the lion of the tribe of Judah is king forever. The power of God broke out in that place. People started getting delivered, started getting healed. Spiritual language. Spiritual language. And so it's not, it's not just a suggestion. Tap your neighbor and say, it's, it's not a suggestion. It's literally a command. And everything begins to flow out of that realm of the Spirit. And whatever comes out of that realm of the Spirit is there to bless you. God wants to bless us. He wants to bless us in a, such a way that it begins to edify us, exhort us, and comfort us. You know, the second, one of the second ways is through tongues and interpretation of tongues. It's one of the things that I think has been really 
kind of put on the back burner in the church. In fact, I don't remember the last time that I was in a service where there was an actual tongues and interpretation of tongues in the service and where God began to speak through utterance and it was a supernatural tongue and then somebody else interpreted what was said. I, 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 that is a powerful display of the Spirit of God and of unity of the congregation and trust in, in the Spirit of the Lord to lead us and to guide us. I've been in some services where, you know, uh, Sister Wet Eye said, you know, she got up and gave a crazy tongue and then, you know, Brother, <laughs> brother Hallelujah jumped up and, 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 and you know, and, and proclaimed, Thus says the Lord. I am here, my child. I am here. And you go, that, you know, it, it's like, uh, okay, praise God. But it, but it wasn't the mind of Christ. I believe that this particular manifestation is so powerful that God can give a strategy if we are in the mind of Christ and we are being constantly, continuously filled, that in that spiritual language that God can begin to speak to an entire congregation about something that will change the course of the city, can give us direction and a blueprint to change that particular region. But God wants a mature body of believers that can handle that type of the mind of Christ, that when tongues and interpretation of tongues is released, that every Everyone can begin to understand and feel in their spirit that that was exactly what was from the Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Then there's a third one that is where the Bible says that you speak mysteries unto God. And these particular mysteries are tongues that are tongues that only God can uh, interpret it's actually classified information that when you pray in the spirit and you begin to release tongues something begins to flow out of you that the enemy cannot get a hold of it's a coded hidden language that the enemy cannot decode in fact in it, when we get into the spirit and we begin to pray these mysteries the word is mysterion it goes up in the realm of the spirit as as literally a coded language and comes down as revelation to our spirit man have you ever been in a place where you were in intercession and you begin to groan and cry and the bible says that you pray these mysteries these these groanings and these utterances that you that that you don't even know what you're saying but suddenly after you came uh, to a particular pace of prayer it lifted off of you and you knew that you knew that you knew that you had the answer that was the moment that that the mysterion came into apocalypto and revelation began to pop like popcorn in your spirit man I'm telling you we need to begin to pray more in the Holy Ghost and intercession is not just a side hobby it is literally one of the mandates for the body of Christ that if we are going to see a fresh move of the Holy Spirit break out in our nation we have have to get back to the place where we're going God I want you to come over me in such a powerful way that I am grown there's groanings and utterances and the gifts of the, of, 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 of the spirit and tongues are beginning to flow out of my innermost being and it's bypassing my mind and it's in my spirit and I don't let go of you like Jacob until you bless my city until you bless my church until you bless my nation we got to get a hold of this. I think that we've made intercession. We, we do, we, we, this is what happens. We have a lot of books on intercession. We have a lot of schools on intercession. But we don't do a whole lot of intercession. And I believe that it's more about getting into the place and saying, you know what, I'm going to crucify my flesh and I'm going to begin to come out on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or whatever night it is that is a specific prayer night and I'm not going to come in and just, you know. Lord, 
we just thank you? No, we need powerful intercession. Well, what, what, Brother Charlie, what will people think of me if I come in here and just start to cry out to God? I think that they might just think that you're full of the Holy Ghost. And if they think that you're crazy, they need to get delivered and saved. Because nations are literally shaken by intercession. We can look at nations right now. We can look at Korea. I was in, I, I, I've been going to Korea for the past several years. And, and I, asked, I asked them, I said, what was the secret to seeing the church, uh, uh, Dr. Cho's church, go from, you know, a few hundred people, less than a hundred people to over a million? He said two things. I said, what was it? He said, intercession, flowing in the Holy Spirit, and evangelism. I said, nothing else? They said, no, nothing. Just praying in the Holy Ghost in intercession, crying out to God, allowing the Spirit to come on you and travail. I mean, so I'm not trying to, I hope I'm all right tonight. I'm just, I, I think I, I, I'm in a place in, my, in, 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 in a season right now where, where I feel like I just got, can't hold back. I got to talk about some stuff. I got to say some things. And I'm telling you, if we're going to see America shaken again, we got to get to our knees and begin to pray in such ways of intercession that, that, uh, that begin to even scare people. If your prayers aren't scaring people, then you're not praying. I'm telling you right now. And your kids should see you praying. I, I, I grew up in a family. I, I just, you know, my dad would be up at like 4 o'clock in the morning praying. I was backslidden. But I couldn't run from the Holy Ghost. I mean, there was, I, I, I said this, I, I said this publicly, even on a television show that I did. I said, I was asleep in my bed one night and, the, and literally the door to my room opened and a cloud came in my room. And I said, my dad must be praying. I got up and I walked out into the, into the living room. There was literally a fog that was in the room. My dad's on his hands and knees crying out to God because he wanted to see his city shaken by the power of the Spirit. And I'm just sitting there. I'm, I'm like 15 years old, and I'm going, man, I, I didn't understand it, but I felt something. I'm telling you, when you're praying and you're interceding and you're saying, well, is this making any difference? I'm getting up in the morning, I'm praying in the Holy Ghost and, and is this making any effect on my children? I'm telling you by the Spirit of God that your kids are beginning to feel it. They can feel it even by your actions. When, you're, when they, they wake up, I felt the peace of God, just like, whoo, I just want to be in this. I'm, I'm backslidden, but I just want to be in this peace. Thank you, Jesus. God wants us to get to a place of intercession where we are crying out. And you can't work it up, friend, but I'm telling you, there's something about when you get in the Spirit of God and it goes past that 20-minute mark. Because I know, you know, we got them saints that are just, you know, 15-minute prayer, and that's it. But I'm telling you, when you get past that, 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 that 15 minute, 20-minute, 30, an hour, two hours, three hour, three, four hours, there's something that happens. And, it, and it's like you are no longer praying, but now God is praying through you. And I'll tell you what, the Spirit of God will come on you in powerful ways, when you make that sacrifice and say, you know what, I'm going to press. Because I, when, when I first started praying, I, I pressed past, I said, what would happen if I prayed past 15 minutes? And I prayed 30 minutes. I said, well, I wanna, next time I went, an hour, and then two hours, three hours, four hours, and so that's just the presence of God would just saturate where I was like, I don't want to move out of this glory. And then I heard a powerful um, uh, story about both John Paul Jackson and Bob Jones. And I was told that they would wake up 
at 2 a.m. And they would pray until 5 a.m. And then they would go back to sleep. And Bob Jones called it the hour of trances. Bob Jones, uh, uh, John Paul Jackson called it the twilight. And in that place, when they, after they had prayed from 2 to 5 in the morning, they would go back to sleep, and that's when they would get revelations. They would have visions, because their spirit was now so wide open that when they went back to go, and go to sleep, they didn't fall back into sleep. They typically would go into the realm of the spirit, and they would begin to see things. Friends, I'm telling you, when you begin to move into that place and say God I'm not just going to go to church on Sunday anymore and just you know come to grab something from pastor so I can make it through the week pastor please just preach to me please pray for me and you know what's the worst is for is this okay what's the worst is like when you and I'm not saying that sometimes there's situations where you got a call on the weekday but please listen to me if you call on the weekday and pastor prays for you during the week and he meets with you and, and, and you get your spiritual fix on that Wednesday or that Tuesday or that Monday afternoon please show up on Sunday because recognize you're not there just to get your need met. You're a part of the army of God. And the army needs you. What if, what if, the, what if you know, the general just, you know, you woke up, one of the generals, one of, one of the U.S. generals just woke up one morning and said, you know, I don't feel like going to work today. I, you know, I know I'm supposed to be commanding this battleship, but I'm just going to take a week off. See, we got to get a mentality of not church. We got to get a mentality of kingdom. And when we get a mentality of kingdom, then we can begin to move forth. Hallelujah. So we got natural language. We got tongues and interpretation. We got, we got spiritual mysteries. But then the Bible says that there are tongues of angels. Maybe I shouldn't talk about that one. So you got tongues of angels. That means, that means that there are literal languages of the angelic. And that means if there's tongues of angels, that would make us, that there's an, there's a, there's an implication there that possibly that inside of the angelic races that there are languages and every single angelic now this is this is I'm stepping out a little bit theologically but it's you know I, I'm about to come out with my book on angels and trust me I've been grilled by uh, if I told you who grilled me at 3 o'clock in the morning, we're talking on the phone, he's doing the forward on the book, and just grilled me on certain things, I had to go back and look and look and look, and I had, I mean, some of the stuff I'm talking about, listen, I've been, I've been there, so just follow me on this for a moment. There, there is a place where I've heard certain teachers talk about the commanding of angels. Now, I can't find anywhere in Scripture directly that associates that you have the ability to command angels. I don't necessarily agree with that teaching in the first place. Because, and the reason that I don't believe in it, the reason I don't believe, is because God would not allow us to lord over another race. If you think that the angels are somehow just just a, a, some kind of being that has no particular structure to it, then you miss the whole understanding of, an, of the angelic. In fact, there's nine classifications of angels, and there's three spheres of angels, and they all have different dialectual an, uh, languages that they speak. And that's why Paul said, with the tongues of angels. And so there are certain realms of the spirit 
that we can move into that as we pray in the name of Jesus through the Holy Spirit to the Father that these particular languages give the angelic the ability to move on our behalf. And the Bible says in the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 8, that as the saints prayed, there was a bowl of in, an incense, and the angels would take those, those, those prayers from off the altar in, in that bowl, and they would hand them to the Lord, and the Lord would hand it back to the angel, and he would throw it to the earth like lightning. Now, this is, this is what I call exotic theology. We will not know until we get to heaven, but it could be possible that there are certain tongues and times that there are prayers that we pray that when angels are sent on assignment on our behalf, they are specifically tasked for that particular assignment that we are praying. And so the language that we're speaking is that angelic tongue. And so when they get the prayer off the incense of the altar, they take it to the Lord and say, this is my assignment. And the Lord stamps the approval, gives it back to them. So then they can go like lightning because the Bible says that the angels that were at the resurrection actually had faces like lightning and they are sent back down into the earth upon that assignment just like Jacob's ladder where it was literally going angels going up angels coming down the reason that they were going up is because their time of that assignment was finished with Jacob and now they had to go back up so a new season could come down and every season has new angelic you need help from above you can't do it on your own. And so God will send the angelic alongside. There are places that even the Bible says the angels fear to tread. I'm so glad that God gave me particularly some angels to go with me to Pakistan. And I know April's happy because my friend Eric's going with me and he needs some angels too. And I'm telling you, when you go on specific assignments, especially in dangerous zones, God will give you those places where you begin to pray and God will release the angelic assistance to go alongside you and just begin to push everything that is out, that is trying to destroy you and, just, and take you out and he'll push them out of the way. I actually believe that the satanic war machine tries to push us to, to a breaking point, but God releases his angelic army whenever we begin to pray. And when we begin to pray, at some, and, and there are certain times where our tongue will even begin to change, and we go, what kind of language was I just speaking? I'm telling you, it was an angelic tongue, and there was an angelic army that was released out of the heavenly realm and was going forth to bat like as a battering ram to break that satanic war machine and that assignment that was against your life you know against your children's lives against your family against your destiny and it begins to penetrate through and the bible says that one angel slayed 10,000 men i'm telling you it don't take a whole lot of them it can just be one angel that's come along and just cut the head off of that serpent and you didn't even know that it was there you just said my god it's been a good week it's been a good month it's been a good year and it all happened because somebody got on their knees and started praying in the Holy Ghost and they read that and they said be filled with the Spirit don't be drunk with the worldly wine no get drunk in the Holy Ghost be filled with the Spirit of God start talking in other languages that you don't even know but God knows and he releases assignments from the angelic and now you're starting to see Things that would have taken years to happen in your, in your life and in your ministry just taking place overnight. You say, how does that happen? Because somebody's been praying. I'm telling you, when the church advances, it's because the people of God pray. When, when God begins to take a city, it's because there was a powerful people that stood up and said, you know what? I'm going to stand behind the vision. I'm going to get in the glory of God. I'm going to begin to pray. I'm going to begin to fast. I'm going to begin to go after the things of God. I'm going to begin to make humility and harmony in my 
heart to God. Everything that comes out of my mouth is going to be edification, exhortation, and comfort. I'm going to not tear down. I'm not going to just look negatively. No, the words that are coming out of my life and out of my mouth are going to be life, and they're going to produce fruit and seeds and, and uh, uh, of life so that this place can grow. I'm telling you, when you're praying, you can't, you can't speak negatively. You might start out like, God, I just don't know. I'm out so-and-so. I just, oh, gee. But I'm telling you, when you stop praying in English and you start going, Rupa seke, romba satalamatelea. Oh, something starts happening in your spirit just starts moving and those mysteries start going up those edifying yourself begins to flow and then you switch over and then you start speaking in that supernatural language of tongues and then now it's an English language you start God I I glorify you. God, I thank you. I thank you for the city of Admore, God. I thank you for Oklahoma. Oh, God, I thank you. I thank you for Global Harvest Church, God. I thank you. I thank you for Pastor Andy. Oh, glory to God. I thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost going to break out in our services, Lord. Oh, Ribista Kata. Oh, Lord, I, I, I thank you. I thank you for Jim, my boss. I, he's a devil, but fill him with the Holy Ghost, God. Yes. Get, oh, Rikista Kandolo Bostiki. I know Sammy, my son, he's not serving the Lord, but I, I just decree and declare over his life. Angel's on assignment right now. The devil, you're not going to have Samuel. He's born of God. He's chosen of God. You can't touch him. Be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for the things of God, the Father, uh, uh, God the Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, submitting to one another in the fear of God. I'm telling you, one of the things that's going to come back to the church is the fear of God. I've been in services before where we were praying like hours just we would have these holy ghost services where we were just praying it was just a prayer service and and i remember this one service we were in and we were praying it was a three hours it was an all-night prayer shut in you know we need more of those i'm telling you they're not old school they're not well you know pentecostal singing she's doing all night shut in now we live in 21st century we don't have to do that anymore you know we you, you, you let me say this to you can i can i say something to you The church should not reflect the modern. It should reflect the kingdom. And any time that we, we begin to we begin to sacrifice the kingdom to, to appease the culture, we have missed the point of when Jesus said, "Pray." that heaven would come on the earth. Thy will be done as it is in heaven as it is on earth. When we sit there and say, well, we, don't, we, we just can't go past 15, you know, 20 minute worship service and, and 20 minutes of preaching because that's just, you know, that's how we're gonna grow the church in America is just 30 minute services. Because, you know, that's just not our culture. Well, maybe your culture needs to change to the kingdom. Because I'm telling you, when you're addicted to God, you can't stop going after him. You're like, oh, Lord. I remember this service was when it's ha it happened several times. Well, one time in particular, uh, the presence of God came in, and everyone was so induced by the Spirit of God that we just sat there. It was silent. It was, it was holy. It was glorious and sitting there and nobody can move. You ever been in a service like that where you're just like, whoo, I can't do nothing. I just, whoo, whew, and you're just sitting there. You know, I can't, and this, this person, I guess they had just came into the meeting. They, 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 they walked, they were going to come and grab the microphone because they wanted to say something. 
They got to about, I was sitting right here. They got to about right here and just fell out. <laughs> Rolled back and forth and then just laid there. You know, nobody did anything. They just, they just looked. And we just kept sat in, sitting there for about another hour because the spirit of the fear of the Lord was there. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, 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 it. I mean, you'll get so full of the glory. Because I mean, you'll get so full of the Spirit of God that you just can't contain it anymore. You just can't hold it back. I mean, phew. You just, ha, 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 ha. It'll just start bubbling out of your belly. People say, why do you laugh, Brother Charlie? Because I'm getting drunk in the Holy Ghost. Uh, well, do you think that laughter's okay? Yes. God isn't into depression. He's into joy. I mean, uh, we're not in heaven. Gonna, there's nobody depressed. You know, Gabriel isn't sad in heaven. Like, you know, no, there's joy. And the Bible says joy unspeakable and full of glory i'm telling you when you get in the spirit and the spirit starts flowing through you and you're filled with the spirit and those songs and hymns and spiritual songs are flowing out of you the glory is pouring out of you 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 can't help you can't help but just ha you can't help but just to just whoo yeah you just can't ha, ha, ha. you can't help it you can't help it you can't help it you can't help it because it's so good. It's so, ha, 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 it's so good. It just starts filling you. It starts, yeah, yeah, and all that weariness and, and, all, and all that just, all, 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 ha, 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 all, all the hardship just, just leaves and suddenly the refreshing of the Lord begins to flow and it begins to fall on you and, and it just begins to come on you and you say, oh, I can make it another day. Oh, yeah, I can go another week. I can go in the strength of God and suddenly you, as, we, as we wait upon the Lord, the strength is renewed and our life is, 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 is just whew, overtaken by the spirit of God and I'm telling you the Lord is bringing you into a time of supernatural refreshing mm-hmm yeah you're not even going to recognize yourself the Lord's giving you a facelift he's giving you a new lease on life the limitations are being broken off the old mindsets are being destroyed. The things that you thought that you could do in yourself. Mm -hmm. God's saying, forget about those things. The dream is bigger than what you thought it was. Get, get, get back into the place of the impossibilities. Oh, yeah, get back into the cloud. Whoo! Get back in. Shoo, stay in. Mm -hmm. No time to get out. And going forth, cloud walker. Mm -hmm. You're a cloud walker. You're gonna, whoo, you're gonna live above. You're gonna walk in the spirit, in the clouds, shoo, in the glory. Oh, yeah, heavenly, heavenly realms heavenly realms lift up your hands right now just whew. there's there's a river of refreshing that's here tonight there's a refreshing uh, where the spirit just be begins to bubble right out of your innermost being and it begins to flood out of you and freshing refreshing refreshing begins to begins to ha begins to flow in a in a magnificent way healing begins to come and the glory begins to come upon you ha and hallelujah Woo. <laughs> lord release that in this place oh some of you just need to open up your mouth right now. And just take a drink. Let that river just flow. 
Let that, let that glory just begin to come right now. Yeah. Oh. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, it's flowing in here right now. Just lift your hands right into that right now. Lord. Your river's flowing all through this place tonight, Lord. Yeah. More, Holy Spirit. Whew. God's releasing a Gideon's army in this place tonight. Oh, is it going to drink out of the river? Drink out of the river. Just open up your mouth. Just take a drink right now. Yeah, the army's being refreshed in this place. Fresh filling of the Holy Ghost. Holy It's for your ministry. Step out right there. Lift up your hands. Fire of God on you right now. Refreshing for your ministry. Refreshing for your life. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire for your vision. The ooh, God's going to start moving things. Moving things. Moving things. Moving things. Things that are unmovable. They said that they could not be moved. But I'm telling you, I see a I see a wave coming of refreshing that is going to bash down every barrier, every wall, everything that's been holding in resistance and let that glory just take you higher, 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 higher than you've ever been, further than you've ever gone. Yeah. Oh, right in, right in, right in, right in. Yeah, more Holy Ghost right now. More Holy Ghost right now. Oh, yes, that's all over you right now. 
knots all over you right now. I'm telling you, if you lift up your hands right now, close your eyes, open up your mouth, God will start filling you right now. Oh, yeah. Have some more. Lord's re- re- <laughs> Oh <laughs> Oh Jesus. 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 you go Lord let the power of God just come over this couple come here both of you right here come here come here I'm going to pray for you right now power of God's on you 
power of God's on you. Mm. Oh. Never the same. Lord, release that fire. <laughs> fire right now. Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name. That is fire. That is fire. That is fire right now. You can have it too. Thank you, Lord. Grab these, these on the end right here, these two right here. The power of God's all over them. It's refilling, refreshing. Whew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just come here. Come here. Come here. Fire. This right here. Make it the right here. Come on. Woo. Lord, release it. Fresh. Wow. Lord, let them be so drunk, they're never the same. I tell you, you get changed, you get transformed. In the river of God, come here right now. You right there, right here, come here. You get changed, you get transformed. We're trying to, you know, just lift up your hands. Lord God, let the fire of God come all over her, refreshing for her family, for her marriage. Let the, let the fire of the Lord flow on her right now in Jesus' name. Let the power, she's never the same, never the same, never the same. Never the same. That's the power of God on you. Ma'am, that's the power. That is the fire of God. Come here right now. Come here right now. Just, just somebody grab her. Somebody get her right here. The power of God's on her. I want to pray for her right now. Thank you, Lord. You're filled. Being filled with the Spirit. Yeah, that's it. Just bring her here. Being filled with the Spirit. Being filled to overflow. Being filled where there's no more room for, oh yeah, being filled, being filled. Yeah, bring her here, being filled, Woo, being filled, being ha 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 ha, being filled, the shatalamande, being filled, angels on assignment, angels moving, glory in your house, glory, oh yeah, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. No more. Where there's lack. No more lack. Angels on assignment. Filling up your cupboards. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands right now. The power of God's in here. I'm telling you. You don't need a music when the power of God's in here. And his music's good. But the power of God, I'm telling you. Yeah. It'll just, it'll just shake you. It'll wake you up. It'll just move on you. Woo! It'll make you a preacher. It'll make you begin to preach. But the fire of God, the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, ask him right now. Just ask him right now. Say, God, oh, fill me. Fill me full all the way up to overflow. God's going to get you again. He's going to hit you again tonight. Come here. God's going to hit you again. Just lift your hands right here. Fire of God on you. Never the same again. In Jesus' mighty name, let the power of the Lord flow through her. Let her be transformed and changed in the name of Jesus. Never the same. Never the same. Never the same. Never the same. Come on. Let's lift up your hands. Open up your mouth. Have a drink right now. Oh, Lord, you're flowing in this place. You're filling this house. You're, you're, 
<laughs> You're releasing re a refreshing from above. Mm -hmm. new, new, new sounds. Oh, yeah. Glory. Thank you, God. Whew. Come here. Let me pray for you right now. The, this, the, just let the, just get in that river. See how it just hits you in your feet right now? Just, oh, yeah. No more ankle deep. No more, no more knee deep. Just all the way over your head. Just let that river flow, Lord. Let that river flow. Let that river flow. Let that river flow. Oh, we want more, Lord. We want more, Lord. We want more, Lord. Step out in the aisle. Step out in the aisle. Step out. We want more, Lord. We want more. We want more. We want to just lift up your hands right now. Just right through you in Jesus' name. Just have it all tonight in the name of God. This more of the glory of God all over you. Oh, oh, something's moving. Something's changing. Oh, I see the glory. Come here. The, I see the glory. Shh. Something's shifting. Something's moving. You're moving out of the place that you were at. You're moving into a new place. Let, let the glory carry you. Hey, the river's going to carry you. Woo, right in. Right in. Uh-huh. Yeah, he's going to take care of you. He's going to take care of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're going to move right in. You're going to move right in. You're going to move right in. That house you've been seeing, you're going to move right in. The dream that you had where you were standing in the house with your kids. The Lord says it's yours. You're moving in. Stop worrying. Stop, stop regretting the past. Stop thinking about what happened long ago. Oh, no, no, no. Let it go, says the Lord. Just like frozen. Let it go. Let it go. You can't hold me back anymore. Here I stand. I told y'all I can't sing, but in the Holy Ghost, it sounds good tonight. You're going to move into that place that you saw, that house that you seen, that dream that you had, where your children were standing there. It's going to be a blessing for you. Lift up your hands right now. The power of God's all over this place, all over this place. Come here right now. The power of God's on you right now. That is, that is power right through you. That is refreshing for you. Are you, you're, you're together? Yeah, both of you, both of you, both of you take hands. Let the Spirit of God touch you. Everything that's been holding you back, everything that's been trying to stop you, everything that's been telling you that you can't answer the call of God on your life is being broken tonight. You are going to be so filled and flooded with God that people won't even recognize you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The army didn't even want you, but God wants you. The army didn't even want you. The military didn't even want you. But God wants you. God is calling out to you. He's calling out your name. Come here. I'm praying for you tonight. There's a call of God on you, man. There's a call of God on you. Come over here. Step right over here. Just let me pray for you, man. Don't worry about it. Just step right back there. Lord God, thank you, Lord, for this guy. Lord, let the fire, you don't even have to believe anything. Just close your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the power of God would touch this young man. I thank you, God, for the fire of the Lord upon his life. Lord, I thank you for moving on his behalf and where he's felt rejected, he's felt not wanted. Lord, I ask you that you would open up your arms wide to him, that you would reveal yourself to him in a mighty way. Everything that has 
come into his life that has tried to destroy him. Lord, I break that off in the name of Jesus, and I thank you that you've called him into a glorious existence. Lord, you are going to use him even in the even after this day. Lord, I ask you that as he goes home, that you would touch him by the power of God in his dreams. Lord, let the fire of the Lord touch him when he puts his head on the pillow tonight. Lord, let the anointing saturate him in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands right now. Lord, let the Spirit of God just just move in this place right now. More right now. Right through you. In Jesus' name. Yep, just for you too. Drunker than you've ever been. <laughs> Wilder than you could have even imagined. More ecstatic in the prophetic utterance than was ever known. I see you entering into the Shiganoth. You say, what's the Shiganoth? It is the realm of the prophetic. Oh, yes. It's that ecstatic. Oh, it is that wild, ecstatic, oh, dance with the Spirit of God, moving in, in, the, in step with the melody of heaven, delivering and decreeing. It's the rave of God. It's the crazy, wild, ecstaticness of the Spirit of the Lord. I see an anointing that will move in a way that will, will shake others, that will shake you, that will move and shake. And, and, and I see an interesting thing. I see, I see like the similar anointing like Stacy Campbell where she shakes and she moves and the Lord says that I've given to you a portion of that powerful gift of prophecy that when you shake when you vibrate when you move the prophetic will flow it'll pierce it will pierce it will pierce the hearts of men in the presence of God the presence of God is in the ecstatic the presence of God is, is in the, the shake and is in the bake. Lord, let her shake and bake. Hallelujah. Shake and bake. Ha, 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 Yeah. The kitchen of heaven is wide open. Yeah. There's something that's baking. There's some prophecies that have been baking in your spirit. They're going to pop out of you. Mm-hmm. Glory. Yeah, people are going to feast on that. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands right now. Just receive out of this right now. Just receive out of this. Just receive out of this right now. Why this is so... (laughs) Woo! Crazy, glorious, magnificent, wonderful, holy spirit moves of God every Sunday. Ah, glory to glory from faith to faith ever increasing moving into greater dimensions oh can god do anything can god move in this little town yeah i gave it to you ha 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 yeah i sent you there ho 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 this isn't a laughing matter yeah mm sure yeah eh matola masata Lord says, look up at the stars and see. Look up to the heavens and behold. Mm, the stars. Mm, I've given you the faith like Abraham. Yeah, yeah, look up at the stars. Those are your descendants moving in the glory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a promise. Uh, there's a child. There's a child. There's a promise that's going to be born. It's going to be birthed. Ho, oh, sometimes we laugh like Sarah at the fact that it could come to pass. But the Lord says, ah, it's tarry for a while, but yet it'll come. The vision for appointed time. Isaiah 7, 9, unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government will rest upon his shoulders. Mm-hmm. Ever increasing. Never expanding. Yeah. Move of the Spirit. Mm. Ah. Isaiah 7, 9. Acts 4, 31. Yeah, Acts. Acts of the Spirit. 
move of the Holy Ghost. Lord, your prayer, is, your, your prayer has been, Lord, stretch out your hand. Acts 4, 31, that by your holy child Jesus, there would be miracles and signs and wonders. The Lord says, aha, yes, it shall happen. You shall see it. As you stretch out your hand, so too will I stretch out my hand to perform incredible signs and wonders, things that you've seen in your dreams in the night, mm -hmm. moving into a new land, in a new place. The Lord says, yeah, I'll give you that space. So, Lord, thank you. <sighs> Release it upon him now. Release it. And I see a visitation. I see a visitation. I see a visitation. I see, I see, I see a visitation in the tent. I see a child being born. I see another one. Yeah, ha, 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 ha. Impossible, no. Promise. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall rest upon his shoulders. That it will be a sign for you. Bless you. In Jesus' name, lift up your hands right now. Let the power of God just come on you. I'm telling you, right now, the Spirit of God flowing in this place right now. There is a ha, 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 woo, hey, so good, so good, so good, so good. He's so good. He's so good. He's better than the he's better than the best. Father knows best. <laughs> Whoo. The Father's going to do for you what your natural father could never do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fire on you. Fire on you. Fire on you right now in Jesus' name. Fire on you. You felt like you were in the fire. Mm-hmm just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace of trial and tribulation. The Lord says, ha-ha, uh -huh, but there was a fourth man. There was one that was in the fire. Uh-huh. Yeah. And where the father, your father, didn't come through. Uh-huh. And promises that were made. The Lord says, I'm going to come through for you. I'm your father. Yeah, I'm going to take care of you. All, oh, ho, 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 all promises that were, that were, were, were given but never kept. Lord says, I never, I never, I never give a promise that I don't keep. Mm -hmm. The fiery trials and tests that came to take you out mm, and tried to destroy. Mm, but you stood the test of time. Then, then, then now the, ha! <laughs> I see the glory. I see the goodness of the Lord. Ah ha 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 Oh, it's so good. Go on and taste it. Yum yum. You'll say, honey. Honey, the whole Lord says, yes, honey, honey, yum, yum, in my tummy. Out of your belly is going to flow rivers, sir, of living life. Mm -hmm. You'll look at your wife and you say, honey, honey. She'll say, yes. You'll say, yum, yum. The Lord's bringing you into sweet days. Taste and see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Where you've walked through the valley of the shadow of death, it was just a walk. Ha <laughs> ha. 
It was a walk, but you're walking on the other side now. Oh, yeah. And now mm -hmm, God's going to increase your faith tonight to walk on the water. You're going to get out of the boat. You've been in the boat for too long. Like Peter just staring. No more. Just looking. Saying, is this even possible? The Lord says, yes. 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 You'll look at your, you'll look at your wife. You'll say, honey. 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 She'll say, what? You'll say, yum, yum. Sweet days. Sweetest marriage. Mm. Glorious. Glorious. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. You'll say, you'll look at your husband. You'll say, baby. You'll say, baby. You'll say, baby. He'll say, yes, honey. You'll say, yum, yum. <laughs> yes. Taste and see. Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Some of you should drink what I'm drinking tonight. You'll start seeing things. It'll be good. It'll be great. It'll be grand. It'll be glorious. It'll be wonderful. Spectacular. 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 It gets better and better every day. Every day it gets better. Woo! It gets, it gets, it just gets better and better. You won't be able to sit. You won't be able to keep you won't be able to keep quiet. You'll have to run. You'll have to dance. You'll have to shout. Oh. You'll just <laughs> you'll kick off your shoes and you'll just run just faster than lightning. You just let God carry you. Just carry you. Mhm. Mm Carry you right in. <laughs> Hallelujah. My, my, my. Thank you, Lord. This, this just rivers just flowing through this place. The presence of God's on you. Come here right now. Just get another drink right now in the spirit. Just never the same. Never, ever, ever the same. Just lift up both your hands, fire of God on you. Your whole mindset's going to change. Your whole way of thinking is going to be transformed. You're not going to look in the mirror in the morning. You're not going to recognize yourself. You're going to say, I, I don't even know who I once was anymore. And you're just going to look at yourself and say, wow, I look totally different. weight of your spirit just let that increase right now in Jesus name in Jesus name glorious 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 wow wow Lord we pray for this stuff tonight <laughs> oh oh Lord we pray for this stuff Woo. let the spirit of God just move on move on it right now yeah, glory, 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 glory. I think sometimes people get up too soon. You know, they just, just, God, just give them another drink tonight. Jesus, Lord, 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 Lord. 
if you want, if you want, <laughs> oh, I just feel like praying for people tonight. If you, if you, if you, <laughs> Jesus, if you want me to pray for, lay hands on you, come here right now. Just come here. You just want prayer. I've been going through the aisles, but here we are tonight. Jesus, thank you for the spirit. I'm just moving. I'm going to need some ushers quick because I'm going to start praying pretty fast. Uh, there, but tonight is a night to be filled. Tonight's a night to be filled. If there's bodies laying on the floor, just kind of go around them right now. Don't try to get in their way. And, and, and so many times we, we get prayed for and we jump right back up. I'm telling you, when you wade in the water, it gets deeper. I pray that you got to be carried out of here tonight. Oh, yeah. Lift up your hands. Lord, let that just, whoo. Okay, all right. Bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Lord, let the fire just flow in this place right now. Let the fire just flow in this place right now. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's power all over you. Just a refreshing, 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 refreshing right now. Be filled tonight. Be filled. Be filled. There's a filling right now. And in just to flow, and, and dusters, you're going to have to watch me because I flow with the river. Where the river is flowing is where I'm going. So, Lord, release that right now. Release that right now. Release that right now. Let that flow from the top of her head. Be filled right now in Jesus' name. Let that filling just, oh, yeah, let that refreshing. Let that refreshing just begin to flow right now like a river. There's, there it is. There it is. It's all over you. It's all over you. That's, that's all over you tonight. That's all over you tonight. Feel right now. Feel right now. Feel. Feel. Let that fire just go right through the. Be filled right now. Right now. Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 In Jesus' name. Woo! Hey! Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Fill her now. That's the river right there. Thank you, God. That's the river. Lord, release it now. Release it. Release that now. Right there. That's fire right there. Right there. Right. Get behind her. Right there. There it is. Right there. Take it. Glory. Fire right now. Have more right now, Jesus. Lord, bless them right now. Fill them, 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 fill them. That's the power of God on Jesus. Fill them right now. Fill them right now. Fill them right now. Fire now. Fire now. Yep. Yep. Fill. Fill right now. Never the same. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, fire. Oh, let that river flow right now. River flow, Holy Ghost. Ooh, never the same. 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 Shoo. My, 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 my. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fill right now. Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for the fire. Thank you, Lord. Just lift up your hands right now. Thank you, Lord. Every need is going to be supplied. Every need. 